His second best start outside of that rookie year in 2001. He just gets better with age. And the pitch is up high for a ball, and we are underway. Ichiro is leading the league with that batting average, 359. And the pitch is taken inside. He had a two for four in the ball game last night. And he gets ahead on the count here, two and oh. 395 on base percentage, 482 slugging. He'll foul that one off in a two ball, one strike count. Uh, Meach Hero, we talk about the balance, and you see what he's done. A 13 game hit streak, as Gary mentioned, against the Orioles. And he keeps his hands back so effectively that allows him to wait till the last minute to make a swing. And got jammed. Good pitch by Guthrie that time. That is one way you can get to Ichiro if you can get it far enough inside so he can't plunk the thing in the left field. But boy, that's awfully hard to do as quick as he is at the plate. He's got a three game hit streak coming in. 2 2 delivery to him. Left field, not deep. Reimold coming. Mora. Nobody's going to get there. And just a long foul ball. He has such tremendous plate coverage, and it all begins with his balance. He uses that exaggerated high leg kick, but he stays back on that back leg and maintains perfect balance. I tell you what, you see him during the course of a day, he's always got a bat in his hand. He was swinging the bat doing kind of shadow hitting in the clubhouse. Had his iPod on and just taking that same swing, swing after swing after swing. He does have a set routine. That one has popped up, and that will end up in the seats behind the dugout, and it'll stay at a two ball, two strike count. So Ichiro trying to work Guthrie a little bit deeper here. First appearance for Guthrie against Seattle this season. His career number, two wins and two losses against them. ERA, 3.48 against the Mariners. Fastball fouled right straight back, and Ichiro hanging tough. For Guthrie here at home this season, his number is 3 and 2 with a 386. On the road, he is 1 and 3 with an 853. He has got the same kind of numbers as the team does when you look at the home and road record. 2 2 delivery off speed, ground ball. Brian Roberts over to get it. Makes the running toss. Each row is out of there. Uh, we talk about four pitches for Jeremy Guthrie. Let's take a look at the grips. That's the four seam fastball. That's the one that he has the best command of. Then he throws a curveball. Notice the middle finger along the long seam. That creates the overhand spin and the big break. That's a slider thrown an awful lot like you throw a spiraling football. And the changeup thrown across the four seams to replicate the spin of that four seam fastball. Guthrie gets the big first out. And uh, Branyan showing bunt. He's got the shift here, so if he does, he's got a base hit. But don't count on it. As Melvin Moore, the shortstop at the shortstop position, everybody else over on the right side. Outfield plays him pretty much straight up. Brian having an outstanding year, his best going from a utility player to a full time player. Now hitting at 320, 14 doubles, 13 home runs, 26 RBIs. And we'll take the pitch outside, 2 0. Well, you talk about how you improve that much dramatically because. He knows he's going to play every day. He comes to the ballpark, knows he's going to be in the lineup, knows he's going to have three, four at bats. Let me correct the count. It was three and zero, oh, and he will take the pitch, and it is in there for a strike, three and one. Brian uh, has struck out 55 times. He is among the top 10, eighth in fact in strikeouts. That one is drilled to right field. Nick Marquez going over near the line, deep in the corner, out of sight, and a foul ball. When Nick gets over there, we lose sight of him for about three steps here. He has made catches over there, so we kind of have to wait and for the umpire's call once he goes across the line. Yeah, it's a big high pop-up. I'm not sure Brandy knew exactly where it was, down into the right field corner. You can see there's an overhead door and an entryway. Brandon got a beat on it. Not really sure if he got enough of it, but it's in foul territory. And Brandon will go down swinging. Guthrie gets the strikeout, and there are two down here in the first inning. Now let's take a look at the defense behind Jeremy Guthrie. It's Rymel Jones and Marquez in the outfield. Robert Andino is starting for the sixth consecutive time. It's the first time since 2005 he's played that many games in a row at shortstop. Roberts is his double play partner. Moore and Huff at the corners, and Matt Wieters is behind the plate. And with two away, nobody on here is Adrian Beltre. Beltre hitting at 246. Has never had a hit against Jeremy Guthrie. He is 0 for 15 in the times that he has faced him. Beltre has turned his season around. 
1 0 delivery. Good breaking ball is swung on and missed. He's batting 347 over the last 17 games. And prior to that, he had an 0 for 23 streak. So he has really had the extreme roller coaster ride. Good breaking ball again away and a one ball, two strike count. Now that was a slider after a curveball. Good sequence of pitches right there. And Brandon, excuse me, Beltre was way out in front of both pitches. Here's the one two set up outside. That's where the pitch is. It'll be taken down low and a one ball, two strike count. So Guthrie is going after a one two three inning here. If he can get it, you talk about the diversity this game brings to your mental condition. Last time out, he gave up six runs, seven hits, and two thirds of an inning in the first inning. Melvin Mora backs up. Guthrie comes out of that performance and has a one two three inning. Pretty sunset time in Baltimore. Orioles lineup when we come back. to the season record in the four games played. Let's take a look at the starting lineup for the O's brought to you by Southwest Airlines. Roberts, Jones, and Marquegas, Huff, Mora, and Scott, Reimold, Wieters, and Andino with Reimold two for three, home run two RBIs last night. PNC scatter report for Felix Hernandez, already 23 years old, and he's made 116 starts. Fastball, curveball, slider, changeup. He's got power movement on his fastball and his slider. Orioles have had pretty good success against Hernandez in their head-to-head -head matchups. Only 23 years old. And Hernandez with a 5-3 and three record and the 10th best ERA in the American League at 3.22. The delivery to Brian Roberts lifts that one to right field. Each row looking. That's near the scoreboard. It'll hit right off the old SK dog. And into second base with a stand-up double. Brian Roberts to lead the ball game off. Well, Brian Roberts getting it off and running just like he did last night in the first inning. And he scored the first run of the ball game. This is a fastball. Middle, middle. No getting around it. That's a great picture of the extension as he gets that fastball out in front of the plate and drills it off the scoreboard in right field. You could say that ball had some mustard on it, but you wouldn't. No, have I wouldn't that. have said that. No. Northrop Grumman, the information systems powerhouse, giving you a look at the double by Brian Roberts. Roberts on at second base. Now Adam Jones batting second in the lineup. Jones an 0 for 4 in the ball game last night, and he'll take the pitch inside for a ball. The decision by Dave Tremblay is if it is a right hander on the mound, Jones will bat second. If it is a left hander, Jones will bat third. And he and Nick Markakis will switch positions based on the starting pitcher. Adam will take a pitch inside, start it around, held up to an 0. Yeah, the thinking behind this is if there is a left-handed pitcher, he does not want to have Markakis 3, Huff 4. So he'll separate the left-handers. But with a right-hander out there, he likes Adam Jones hitting and separating Brian Roberts from Nick Markakis. 2-0 delivery on the way. And that's going to miss inside. As Felix Hernandez close on the inside fastballs, but not close enough. 
And Jones gets ahead on the count here, three and zero. Oh. Brian Roberts at second, being held by the shortstop Betancourt. Hernandez has given up three hits to Jones in six plate appearances, and will get that one in for a strike, three and one. You know, a lot of people might wonder, what about the psychology of hitting second compared to hitting third? Well, ideally, Terry Crowley doesn't want to see anything different from Adam Jones. He's been good all year using the big part of the field making sure he gets a good pitch to hit and don't think about just advancing the runner think about knocking him in three one count Roberts off second base and Jones will take it down low and he is on with a walk so the Orioles get a shot at having an inning here in the first two on nobody out Seattle defensively has good speed in the outfield Chavez Gutierrez and each other they're all capable of playing center field on the left side Adrian Beltre teams up with Unieski Betancourt who returns to the lineup after he got a few games off to the manager's choice Lopez is the second baseman Brandon's the first baseman and the catcher is Jamie Burke so Nick Marquegas will get the early RBI chance in the game Nick has continued to be strong in these settings 353 with runners in scoring position. He's got two on here with nobody out infield to double play depth. Marikakis takes it in the air, center field. Tagging up at second base, Roberts. Catch made Gutierrez, and the runners will have to go back. So Marikakis retired on the fly ball out. One away, Roberts remains at second, and Jones at first. Gary, we mentioned the speed in the outfield. They all throw very well also, so you've got to be aware of that. That's why that ball wasn't deep enough for Roberts to even consider running on Gutierrez. One big out right there, and here comes Aubrey Huff. Huff had a one for four in the opener last night, now at 263 on the year with 39 home runs. Aubrey now, one home run in the last two... 22 games, part of that drought that the Oriole power hitters have had in the home run department, except, of course, Luke Scott and Nolan Reimold. One down. Huff has gone four for 16 with a home run. Lifetime off Fernandez. Roberts jumping around, dives back in with Betancourt covering the bag. Now, last night's game, after the leadoff double by Roberts, he stole third base and came in to score on a ground out off the bat of Adam Jones. So Felix Hernandez is well aware that Roberts is thinking about stealing third. Betancourt is almost right behind him, the same location, trying to hold him on the bag. And again, the turnaround this time, Betancourt does not go over to cover. Now, Brian Roberts has already done what he designed to do start of all this and that's get the pitcher's attention and maybe get a better pitch for Aubrey Huff to hit that he would have otherwise. Huff waiting on the first pitch to him and it is down low for a ball. Now, we talk about the good numbers that this Oriole team as good as Felix Hernandez is and he's been great lately the Orioles have always hit him well. And you just look up and down the order. Everybody in the lineup has done something against Felix Hernandez. Big time averages that the Orioles hope they can get against him early in this ball game. Ivory Huff will take the pitch and again it's going to be down low and that's where Hernandez is missing. These pitches down in the below the strike zone and the bench sends Burke out to have a talk with Hernandez maybe break the uh, cycle that he's in right now not getting those strikes called at the knees. Now here are the numbers we're talking about with the Oriole hitters against Felix Hernandez Marquez 450 more 391 Roberts 333 Wigginton 600 Jones 500 and his tourist who is on a disabled list he's even had success at three for three. Ivory Huff down to first base and that will be a foul ball. A little off speed delivery right there by Hernandez and the count will go to two and one. So a pretty good battle here is Hernandez after the first two got on trying to keep him there at first and second base Huff obviously with only one away becomes the big out here in the inning. Aubrey this season has done a good job at moving runners around as he has done really virtually every season for the Orioles 320 with runners in scoring position. Here's the 2 1 delivery to him. Huff got one there. That's a fair ball. Brannion knocks it down, and there's your first big defensive play of the game. Russell Brannion not only denies Huff a hit, 
but also denies the Orioles, at least for the moment, of putting a run on the board. Yeah, he saves a run for sure with Roberts at second base. This ball is headed down the right field line. Brandon knocks it down, pops to his feet in time to get Aubrey Huff. Let's give you a good idea of where this ball is headed, right down the first baseline. Here comes Brian Brandon over, knocks it down, stays right there, picks it up, and he's able to beat Huff to the bag. So now it's the two-out RBI as Melvin Mora stands in. And Mora will take that for a strike. Last night in the first inning with a couple on and two outs, Mora hits a ball headed for the seats, and there's the glove of Indy Chavez and a fan interfering with Chavez over the field. So Melvin Mora is ruled out to end that first inning. Hernandez will step off. And the ruling there had to be that the ball was going to be caught but for the fan interference. And that was pretty clear when you looked at the review. Great pitch by Hernandez as he drives one down and in. And suddenly he's got a chance to get out of this inning. Two on, but two down after the Orioles got the first two on here in the first. Melvin Mora, the nine for 23. Off Felix Hernandez. Roberts Jones on base and that will miss down low one ball two strike count. The starters for the Mariners of late have just been well, in fact all season they've been exceptional but over the last month of June here the games they've played the starters ERA is 2.13 for the month of June. I mean that's spectacular and overall in the season their ERA is starters still number one in the American League. One ball, two strike count. Hernandez takes too long. Mora will back out. Probably that's why the Mariners have played all those one run ball games. At 27 one run games. Yeah, pretty high number. One, two delivery. Mora to first base. Brangens up. Hernandez covers. And what a job by Felix Hernandez to get out of that inning. No runs, one hit, no errors. Two are left in scoring position after one. No score. win $99 worth of American Classic scratch off tickets from the Maryland Lottery for every Oriole home run hit tonight. You can have a chance to win too. Enter by logging in MassonSports.com We go to the second inning. It'll be Griffey Lopez and Betancourt and Griffey will take the first pitch for a strike designated hitter as he was last night and went 0 for 4 in the ballgame. Griffey has not faced Guthrie before. Fouls that one back. Batting just 213 on the season. But Ken Griffey Jr. has been able to put some extra base hits up that have made a difference for the ball club. Six homers, eight doubles. 
That pitch will be taken inside. One ball, two strike count on him. Yeah, and he's a presence in the lineup. Anybody that pitches against him just understands who they're dealing with. And you've got to make sure you don't make any mistakes. He has to cheat now from time to time and get to a fastball, but he leaves something out over the plate, as we saw in Seattle. He'll knock it out of the ballpark. And Griffey takes that one to left center field. Rymold. The ball is not going to get any assistance tonight. The air is heavy. A lot of moisture around and it is very humid and there's no breeze whatsoever. So you're going to have to drive one through that in order to get it out here at this ballpark tonight. And that's all right with Guthrie who has given up 14 homers second most in the American League. So the tougher it is to drive it out. The better for him. Lopez will take the pitch for a strike. Jose Lopez continuing. His solid season playing at second base. He left that one and he did drive it left field. That is way back and he got it. Goodbye home run. Lopez with a long ball. That'll be his seventh of the year and his 33rd RBI. And a 1 0 lead for Seattle. Well, first pitch was a fastball in the inside part of the play with a little late movement. And it looked like they've tried to throw a slider. Look at the target away. And this ball stays right on the inside corner. And Jeremy is going through a stretch right now where every time he misses his target, it gets hit hard. That was tagged. Here is Betancourt, the shortstop. So Jeremy Guthrie now tied for first in the American League with 15 home runs surrendered. 1 0 delivery on the way. Ground ball to the hole. And Dino's got it. A long throw. Writes himself. Guns it and got him. Good play by Robert Andino at shortstop. Well, that's his final play, as you'll see. He had a long way to go to his right to get the ball fielded on the grass. And then watch how he writes himself, plants that back foot, and gets a little extra on the throw. Right on the money to get Betancourt. Andino has played very well in the field. This is his sixth straight start at shortstop. That's the longest stretch of games he's played since 2005 at short. He had him by a half a step. Good play. Here's Andy Chavez. And the pitch is taken away. Chavez with a one for three in the opener last night. Batting at 272. Couple of homers, three doubles, 13 RBIs. Shows bunt, and he will take the strike. And he will lay one down if given a chance. Oriole pitchers continue to surrender home runs at a franchise record high. Throughout most of this season, they have been second only to Philadelphia in the majors in home run surrender. And that that has continued. And for Guthrie, that is the way it has been in his career. Last year, same thing. That time got him up. That one fouled off Weeders, who felt it. And a two ball, two strike count. Yeah, it looks like that ball was up. Jim Wolf giving the catcher a little bit of a break. The home plate umpire. Had a little bit of a mutual admiration going on back there. You take a foul tip, I'll help you out. And if I take one, I hope you help me out. <laughs> Stand up and go talk to your pitcher as needed. Two ball, two strike count. Chavez, a ground ball to third. Melvin Morrow. And that will retire the side. One run on one hit as Lopez delivered his seventh of the year, and it is one nothing Seattle.
of the bottom of the second inning is our Wired Wednesday, and we are delighted to have Brian Bass joining us from his home out there in the bullpen. Brian, thanks for uh, taking time to join us. We appreciate it. Thanks for having me, guys. Hey, what are you, uh, we know you're watching the game out there. Do you spend a lot of time just seated? Do you walk around a lot? What do you do while you're out there in the course of a game? Uh, mostly watch the game. Um, walk around a little bit, starting fourth, fifth inning, try to get loose, and mostly just watching the hitters and what they're trying to do. Brian, you've been on a real roll lately in a great outing on Sunday, four and a third of one hit relief. You seem to have a lot of confidence right now. It looks like you feel like you can throw a strike just about any time you want to. What's turned it around for you? I think just mentally, my mental approach has been pretty good. Um, going out there trying to attack the zone, get ahead of guys, and, and put the ball in play early. Ball club, Brian, really seems to play well here at Camden Yards, uh, both pitching and offense. Is it just being home that makes the difference that the club does so well here? Uh, I don't know. Um, this is a great place to play. I think we have a, a good energy here, and everybody seems to do well. I don't know. I can't really explain it. Brian, when you're on a roll, obviously you're getting the balls put into play. Robert Andino has done a marvelous job filling in for Cesar Asturias. How much confidence do you have pitching in front of this infield? Well, it's great. Uh, having an infield behind you like we do, it's, it gives you a lot of confidence to, to throw strikes and, and put it in play and let the, the work behind you. Two ball, two strike count. Luke Scott designated hitter at the play to add the one for four in the ball game last night. Do you guys bet on home runs out there? Who's going to get the next one for you? For no, you? don't do that. No, it's you don't do that? Hit oh. Well, if someone's going to get one. you got a pretty good shot. It'll be this guy. 2-2 two -two delivery time. Swung on and missed. Took him out of there. Hernandez gets his first strikeout. Do you feel as though, Brian, the pen is pretty much settled in now, knowing what each of you is supposed to be doing and what your role is out there at this point of the season? Yeah, I mean, as this year has gone on, everybody's gotten pretty comfortable and the roles have kind of developed, and I think everybody knows that the game goes along where they are and where they aren't going to pitch. Right. Brian, I spent my whole career down in that bullpen, and I know the competition and the success of one reliever helps everybody else. Do you guys have a good competition going on there because you have... I'm really, sorry, can you repeat that? I say when you guys are down there in that bullpen, you've got a lot of competition, and it's friendly competition, obviously, but everybody is really throwing the ball well right now. Does that help fuel the uh, spirits down in the bullpen? Well, I think it's everybody just goes out and, and tries to get the ball to the end of the bullpen. You know, we've got a, a solid 7, 8, and 9 guy, and, and we if we can do our job and get the ball to them, we feel pretty confident and we can get the win. So far, you're doing that. Here is Nolan Reimold up. Reimold with a three-game hit streak and had the home run in the ball game last night. Brian, how about a perspective on the young players who have come up, uh, the difference that's made around the club? Tell us the feeling from inside the clubhouse. Those guys have all done a great job. They've come up here and, and made themselves comfortable and have gone out every day and, and done something to impress people. It's been it's been fun to watch. Fun to watch up here, too. Brian, we really appreciate you joining us on Wired Wednesday. Thanks for taking the time to do it. Continued success. Keep up the good work in the pen. No problem. Thank you, guys. Right. Brian Bass from his home out there in the bullpen. 3-2 delivery on the way, and that'll be chopped foul by Reimold. Three ball, two strike count, one away. The first strikeout Hernandez got against Scott leading off the inning. Take a look at the power show these two have put on for Luke Scott. Eight homers, 18 RBIs. Reimold, the five home runs. That one to short. Betancourt, nice backhand and a strong arm. Wow. Two down. Fine play by the shortstop. Yudiesky Betancourt had about four days off as the manager wasn't really pleased with the effort he was seeing from his shortstop, and it looks like the message was received clear. Right here, he makes a fine play, sliding on his knee, turning around in the opposite direction and throwing the strike to Russell Brannion to retire Nolan Rimmel. Big-time arm right there. Two down. Here's Matt Wieters. Matt had a two for three in the ball game last night. Two down, nobody on. One nothing lead on the home run by Lopez for the Mariners. Interesting note that in the victory last night, it was the first time in the last 50 years that the Orioles have had a rookie pitcher, Brad Bergeson, record a win while two other rookies, in this case, Weeders and Reimold, had multi hit games in the same contest. A pitcher winning and two rookies with multi hit games in a win for the Orioles. That doesn't happen. Very often, third time in the last 50 years. So the youngsters continue to 
make their way not only for themselves into the major league level of playing but also helping the Orioles put up some big W's. Yeah and you can see Bergeson and Birkin sitting on the bench two of the starters conversing over what they see out on the field. That's the one thing I've noticed about how tight these guys are. All the young guys have really kind of grown up in the organization come through the minor leagues together played an awful lot together and they got strong feelings for one another. That's going to be striked into center for a base hit. So Weeders is on his third hit and four at bats in the two games. This one comes with two down in the second inning. Hernandez will now work with the runner at first to the number nine hitter Robert Andino. Andino had a one for three in the ball game last night. The only time that he has had at bats against the Seattle ball club. And with two down, even with two down, Beltre will play even with a bag at third, respecting Andino's speed. Swung on and missed. Fastball kept down low. Strike one. Now you see Beltre at the edge of the grass. Rest of the infield is straight away. Brandon holding Weeders on at first. Hernandez worked his way out of a jam in the first inning. When the first two got on, the Orioles failed to score. And Dino, another one biting in on him, and a two strike count. And Hernandez coming right at him, just throwing fastball strikes and rearing back a little bit. Weeders held at first and a short lead. 0 2 delivery. That one in the air to left field. That's an atom ball, though. Andy Chavez is there, and he's got it. No runs, one hit, no errors, and one left on base. After two at Camden Yards, Seattle leads it. One nothing. Ahara will come off the disabled list tomorrow. He'll get the start against the Mariners. Looks like that strained hamstring is feeling better. And today, Dave Chimbley asked Rick Kranitz, uh, what could they expect from Koji tomorrow in, in typical pitching coach fashion? Rick said, I'll just go out there and let him pitch. But Dave said, realistically, if they get 75 to 85 pitches from Koji tomorrow, they'd be very happy. Now, of course, there does have to be a corresponding roster move. We don't know who that will be. Some think it could be David Hernandez, but the Orioles could opt to keep him up here in the bullpen. If so, it could get very interesting who they release or send down Gary and that will be done tomorrow and Jer Jeremy Guthrie gets a strike on the outside corner Jamie Burke the catcher those kinds of decisions are never made until necessary because you never know what will happen in this game somebody could get hurt and that would decide the whole thing shallow center field Jones coming in and he's got it and Burke is retired one away here in the third inning 
The Orioles have announced an exciting new ticket offer for a limited time. It's the Orioles rookie flex pack. You get tickets to four games of your choice, including a prime game. And the first 500 fans who purchase two seats are going to get an autographed photo of Nolan Reimold celebrating walk-off homer. If you purchase four seats, the autographed picture of Matt Wieters during his first major league hit. For details, 888-848-BIRD. Go to Orioles.com. Franklin Gutierrez, batting ninth, center fielder, one for three last night, and takes it for a strike. Gutierrez has really turned his club around defensively. He has taken over at center field and has become truly a power alley to power alley center fielder, and especially at that home ballpark, that's important for this team. Fouls that one off at the plate. He's done a pretty good job offensively, too, especially down at the bottom part of the order. He's hit successfully in 10 of the last 16 games at a 283 clip. He's had one hit in three at bats, lifetime off the Orioles 29 year old starter, Jeremy Guthrie. 0 2 delivery on the way, jam shot and jammed himself. That hurt. Even with the guard on. Yeah, and I think he hit it off his foot. Obviously, not protected by that shin guard. Yeah. Trainer's going to come out and give him some time to try to regroup. Inside pitch, oh, hit him on the kneecap, hit him above the ship. That really hurts. Yeah. And you know what? We see this all the time and make light of the situation, but Matt Williams broke an ankle. Jeremy Jermaine Dye broke a leg, fouled the ball right off his shin, and had a nasty spiral fracture in his shin bone. It lasted several months. But you never know, you know, everybody kind of yelps at you from the opposing dugout, but there's sometimes some serious injuries. Adam Jones last year in Seattle mm -hmm. found the foot off his, found the ball off his foot and broke a bone and foot. Don't often see it go right off the knee. And Guthrie comes back inside. We'll miss on that, but ahead on the count, a ball and two strikes. Boy, he's hurting. Yep. He is still feeling the effects of fouling that ball off that left kneecap. One down, one and two, bases empty. And we'll miss down low with it. For Jeremy Guthrie, the team has four wins and eight losses in the games that he has started. This is his 13th. Hitters are 290 against him. Right handers 302. Left handers 276. 15 home runs now. The 15th picked up by Lopez in this ball game for the Seattle lead. 2 2 delivery and a slow roller. He runs it out, but an easy play made by Andino to get the up. Gutierrez retired, two down. Now these are the kind of games the uh, Mariners are getting used to playing. These one-run ball games, eight of the Mariners' last nine have been decided by two or fewer runs. Their pitching staff has done a great job at holding opponents down, but they haven't been scoring many runs on their own. Here is Ichiro. He grounded out his first time up. The two away, no one on. Ichiro will take the pitch away for a ball. Loves playing against the Orioles and loves hitting here. His highest average of any ballpark right here at Camden Yards. 385 coming into the series in the 35 games that he has played here in this ballpark. Here's the 2 0 delivery to him. Swung on and missed. Get that one by him. Every once in a while, HRO will guess fastball, look inside, and try to put a charge in it. He's got five home runs so far. He might have been looking fastball in that last pitch and then fouls off an outside fastball. Goes to two and two. Interesting comparisons for the moment. Ichiro and Adam Jones of the Orioles. You see their average? The extra base hits they've picked up. They're among the leaders in that department and they're on base percentage. Not very different. That's pretty good for Adam Jones. You get the comparison with the likes of Ichiro in some important offensive categories. Yeah, we mentioned this was his fastest start since his rookie season in 2001. Well, that's a good pitch. That is a good pitch, a good slider with a lot of downward break on it. Just missed the inside corner and it really handcuffed Ichiro. Ichiro leads the league in hitting. Adam Jones is fourth. 
Takes that one in the gap to right center field. He got all of that one. Marquez is going back. That'll hit off the base of the wall. Ichiro will stay at second with an easy stand up double. And a four game hit streak. That comes with two down. I mean, it's almost as if he knows what's coming. And he has such tremendous hand eye coordination. And this is a 3 2 pitch. It's a fastball. And you can see how his body bails out. But look at how his hands are so steady. And they stay back. Head stays down, rolls that top hand. And then he's got the gliding strides that easily moves him around the bases. So Ichiro is on with his 11th double. Each team now with two hits. And here is Russell Brannion. Brannion's got a four game hit streak coming into this one. A strikeout victim, his first time up. But a dangerous hitter in this lineup. Since moving into the number two spot, he has had seven hits and 22 at bats. As we've mentioned before, Don Wakamatsu, the manager, wanted to get his two best hitters together in the lineup to get them more plate appearances and to maybe generate some runs. For a ball club struggling to score, and certainly Ichiro and Brannion have done their part. Two one count. Well, with Ichiro getting on base ahead of Russell Brannion, that naturally gets the pitcher to pitch out of the stretch, and that's obviously when he is less effective than the windup, and you put Brannion in a good spot. He'll chop that one. Guthrie will get the end. No runs and one hit, no errors. And a base runner left on. We'll go to the bottom of the third. Orioles have the top of the order coming up. Roberts Jones and Marquegas coming up and uh, on our Wired Wednesday the skipper Dave Tremblay joining us from the dugout skip for your starter tonight for Jeremy Guthrie a little different look than what we saw the last time around what's the difference uh, he's staying away from the middle of the plate for the most part um, you know he's giving him a little bit different look he's dropped down a couple times but uh, you know his his fastball is down he's got a little bit more movement on it so um, you know that's what we need out of him obviously you know, with Hernandez on the mound, you got to get him early because, uh, you know, we had a chance there in the first. Hopefully we can uh, get it started here again with B-Rob up. He'll get stronger as the game goes on. And, you know, we got to try and get some runs early against him. The delay here, the shortstop, Betancourt, everyone had gathered around him. He was looking at his hand as though something might have been wrong with it. So he threw a couple of balls to third base and seems to be all right. Yeah, he looked pretty good on that play Reimold hit. Yeah. <laughs> Yes. Dave, there's been so much talk about Matt Wieters at the plate, but boy, I tell you, behind the plate, he doesn't give you the impression that he's in uh, his first couple of weeks of catching in the big leagues. Is that how you feel down in the dugout? Look, he looks real comfortable. He doesn't move back there. He gives a nice target. Um, you know, he does his homework before the games. He's on the same page with the pitcher. He, he just looks like he's been here before. And, uh, you know, he's coming around a little bit better with the bat. He looks a lot more relaxed. I think it's been good that he... He went on the road with us. He's come back this time, and uh, he just looks a lot more comfortable. 
Robert Andino has made some spectacular defensive plays, playing a little more regularly, and uh, you must be very pleased with the way he has played. He hasn't looked like a backup guy. He's looked like a frontline guy in the field, and that's what you need. You need uh, consistent defense out of the guy that's playing shortstop. He's been tested. He's made a little bit of uh, every kind of play, and uh, whatever he gives us with the bat, we'll take it, and he's uh, he's done a nice job filling in for, uh, for his tourists. Roberts, the strikeout victim. That'll be the second K picked up by Hernandez in the ballgame. One down. Adam Jones drew a walk his first time up. And we'll take the pitch up high. Skip, we talked a bit about your decision here and how you're going to use Jones and Marquecas in the lineup. Uh, better the fans hear it from you. Tell us your process, your, your decision making on that. Well, I just felt that, uh, you know, we've had so many left handed pitchers against us, and, you know, Nick and uh, Huff have been going up there. We've given guys the opportunity to face us. Uh, left against left early in the game and late in the game. I'm going to split it up against left handed pitchers and hit, uh, you know, Jones in the three slot and Nicky in the two slot. And then when there's a righty uh, starting the game, I'll put Jones back up in the two slot and have the lineup balanced a little better for us. Two ball, one strikeout on Jones. Adam hitting at 340, and he will take that pitch for a strike. From that level you're at, Skip, what is it about Felix Hernandez that makes him so tough out there on the mound? His arm angle is the same on every pitch, and he's got movement late, like right there on that pitch right there, you know, and that one there. It's it's hard to differentiate between his fastball and his slider because it's so heavy and it's late, and the movement on it is uh, is in the strike zone. At 23 years old, he's pretty poised out on the mound. This is his 117th start. Uh, I guess they did a nice job of bringing him along. Oh, he reminds me of a guy I had with the Cubs when I had him in AAA, uh, Zambrano. He's a horse. You know, he's going to give you a lot of innings. He's going to keep you in the game, and he's athletic. 2-2 two -two delivery and a chopper right back to him. There's your athleticism, Skip. And he gets the out. Skip, we had talked uh, early in the ballgame about Nolan Reimold, and how kind of quietly he has won that left field job and put up some pretty impressive numbers. Talk a little bit about his development that's kind of gone under the radar. I think it started in spring training with him. He got an opportunity to play a lot uh, in big league camp. And he got hot at the right time at the end of spring training. I, I, he had some sessions with uh, Terry Crowley early in the morning. Uh, he took it to AAA. He's come back up here. He's kind of an unassuming young man. He just wants to play. He was out earlier this afternoon with T-Bone working on some positioning in the outfield. He's still learning the hitters. Um, boy, I tell you, you try to sneak the fastball by him, and more times than not, he's going he's gonna to put the barrel on it. And Mark Angus takes it up high. Skip, we appreciate it. Uh, congratulations. Getting back home, getting a W, and hope you can string a few together here. Yeah, this would be a nice uh, homestand to put some victories on the board and get back in this thing. I appreciate it. All right. Thank you. Dave Tremblay, Skipper of the Orioles on our Wired Wednesday, joining us from the dugout. Valentin has come on to play in left field. Chavez has moved to center field. And Gutierrez has come out after fouling a ball off his knee. So that foul ball we saw him take is taking him out of the ball game. Yeah, there's Chavez who moves from left to center field. And yeah, Gutierrez was hurting. He fouled that ball right off his left kneecap. And obviously, they're going to address it in the locker room. Nick Marquez is on four in a row out of the strike zone after a couple of relatively easy outs. That is the second walk. Surrendered by Hernandez. It comes to two down here in the third inning. And will give Aubrey Huff a chance against the right hander. Aubrey robbed of a base hit and at least one RBI on what is right now the biggest defensive play of the game made by Russell Brannion at first base in the first inning. Orioles had two on and one away. And Huff put one right down the line, and Brannion smothered it. And as a result, the Orioles didn't get a run in the first, even though they had the first two hitters on base. Yeah, he made such a good play. I just looked at my scorebook, and I penciled in Brian Roberts was scoring in the first. I had to erase. <laughs> good work. That's why you work in pencil. Why stress? Wow. That was uh, that had hit labeled all over it. 1-0 delivery on the way, and that one has popped up. Shortstop or third shortstop. Betancourt has the angle. And he's got it. So the Orioles unable to move him around. No runs, no hits, no errors, and one left on base. Three complete and one nothing M's.
Kitchens. Book your next reservation at southwest.com. And by PNC, PNC leading the way. Here at Oriole Park at Camden Yards, it's the Orioles Reach Game Day Experience program underway, and Adams Jones is hosting tonight. The kids are from the Seed School of Maryland. They are on hand to enjoy the ball game, and Adam on hand to be their host. 1 2 0 for the M's, the home run by Lopez, the only run up on the board. The Orioles, 0 2 0, have left four. Adrian Beltre. He has raised his average 46 points since May 20. After a very cold start, he started to hit the ball again. 46 points takes him all the way up to 246. That's how cold he was. That's how cold he was. That slider's worked against him. Guthrie's got a good one, a hard slider away that he's used on Beltre in this ball game. Beltre grounded out his first time up, 0 for 16, lifetime off Guthrie. That one chopped to third. Mora was very deep and not going to make the play. Lead off and on fourth inning. Melvin Mora. They be charged with an error. Yeah, Beltre topped it. It was that side on fastball with a little sinking action on it, and he topped it toward third. Melvin was deep at third. You can see he hit right in front of home plate. And that second, third hop kicks off the heel of Mora's glove and charges with an error. Melvin Mora. That will be error number four, charged to the Orioles' third baseman. And no chance once the bobble began, as deep as he was. So a runner on Beltre, and now Griffey up. And he flied out his first time up. And the throw over, Beltre back to the bag. Adrian Beltre, six straight and stolen bases. Griffey will go after the first pitch. Melvin Mora. He's got that one, and Griffey is retired in a hurry. One down. Tonight is your last chance to win the Orioles.com Adam Jones Bobblehead Night Sweepstake Experience. One lucky winner, four VIP seats, VIP parking for next Wednesday's game against the Mets. And you'll receive four passes to watch batting practice right from the field. Don't miss your chance. Contest ends midnight tonight. Enter at Orioles.com right now. Here is Lopez, who did the damage with the long ball, his seventh home run of the season, with one away in the second inning. Yeah, interleague play coming up on Friday. Atlanta will be here for three days, and the Mets follow them next Tuesday for a three game set. You'll get a chance to see two of the premier clubs from the National League Eastern Division. Outside to Jose Lopez. Orioles against Atlanta. 11 and 16 lifetime. Played them last in 2006. Against the Mets, the Orioles are 7 and 12. And also played them in 2006 when it was the East that they were playing against. So, two real good ball clubs coming in. That ball is grounded foul. And a one ball, two strike count. Now Lopez hit the home run and his last hit bad. It was a. 0-1 slider that he hammered to the seats in left field. And now Jeremy Guthrie has pounded the fastball inside very effectively. See if he's trying to set up the outside part of the plate. Inside again. Pretty effective. Well, the only thing Lopez can do with that pitch is pull it foul. He can't keep that pitch fair. It's probably off the plate inside. But Jeremy Guthrie certainly has him in a swing mode now. And if he drops that breaking ball down and away, he'd probably get a strikeout. Runner on at first base, one away. Beltre the runner, one ball, two strike count. Delivery to Lopez. And again, he will fight that one off foul outside the third base. Big difference as to whether or not he's home. Where it hasn't gone quite as well as it has on the road, at least average and home run wise. RBI wise, it's pretty good. 16 RBIs hitting 207 at home. Pretty good production for a very low average. Beltre steps back in the bag, throw kind of into his shoulder there. One two count trying to keep the double play in order the delivery a slider. 
Went outside and missed it. Two and two. Yeah, Lopez did a pretty good job of picking up on it early that that was a breaking ball out of the strike zone. So now you've got a couple of different options. I might not come inside again as you've pitched him inside a lot in this at bat. Throw fastball down and away. Lopez again fouls it off outside a third. Second inning, here's the home run, the only run of the ball game. Game on an 0-1 pitch. He hits it into the seats for Lopez. That's his seventh home run of the season. Lopez has had the home runs against the right-handers, but not a very good average. Five homers off right-handers that hitting only 219 off them. 2-2 Two -two count, Beltre's going. The delivery and pushed into right field, a perfect hit and run. Beltre will head over to third. Marquegos will have to go to second. And there are runners on the corners with one away here in the fourth inning. For a perfect execution of the hit and run, and Lopez does a good job. He's a notoriously poor hitter, and he pushes this ball into right field with Beltre running. Marquegos just plays it back to second. So now Jeremy Guthrie. Trailing in the ball game, one nothing. In a tough situation, looking for a strikeout of the ground ball. Yaneski Betancourt trying to earn his way back into the lineup at shortstop has done a good job defensively in this ball game. One fine play, and now what he'd like to do is gain a little more favor with his manager, with whom he has had the outs recently, hitting 247. Couple of home runs and a slow roller runner coming only play is going to be at first more guns it and gets the out. Betancourt will get the RBI as Beltre was off on contact and the Mariners take a two nothing lead. Beltre had reached on the error and scores. Uh, there's nothing else you want to do except put the ball in play in this situation. Jeremy Guthrie makes a great pitch. You can see the delivery very compact on the front side driving toward home plate full extension out of that landing foot. And it's just a little dribbler up the third baseline. Moore has the only play to first base. RBI for the shortstop. Now a runner at second base and two down. And Andy Chavez who started the ball game. In left field, has since moved to center. He grounded out and is only at bat. Ground ball towards short. And Dino makes the quick play and will get the out. So it'll be an honor and run here in the fourth inning with the hit and an error and a base runner left on. 2 nothing M's.
Bay to Camden Yards, serving made-to-order Old Bay crab cakes, crab pretzels, steamed Old Bay shrimp, and much more. Plus, Charm City Seafood features several local micro brews on tap. This just might be the place to be on Saturday when the Orioles plan to give away an Old Bay crab mallet set to the first 10,000 fans 15 and over. So next time you're at Oriole Park, visit Charm City Seafood right behind Palm Plate on the ballpark's main concourse. Gary? Mm, 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 mm. Looked pretty good, didn't it? Sure did. Base hit into right field. First pitch to Melvin Mora. Detroit will get it back in. So Mora starts out the fourth with a single off Felix Hernandez, who has walked to, struck out to, and that will be hit number three for the O's. And here is Luke Scott. It's been a pretty potent one two punch. Luke Scott with the power. He's got 13 home runs. Nolan Rimel, the rookie, he too has seven home runs in his seventh here last night. And they have combined to be the most prolific duo since May 26th. And the Orioles need it right now. The delivery is taken for a strike. Felix Hernandez has given up only six home runs in the 82 innings that he has worked. Five of those hit by left handers. 0-1, 2 nothing lead for the Mariners. Game two of this three-game set. The Orioles won the opener 3-1 to one last night. That pitch is taken down low. Hernandez doesn't miss many up. He doesn't give you a chance to get a pitch up around the waist very often. Boy, he stays down. Yeah, he does. He's a big guy. He's about 6'3". He's got a great downhill plane, and he uses that sinking fastball and slider bottom of the strike zone. Hernandez, a 3-3 record lifetime against the Orioles. Luke Scott trying to lift one right there. Fouls it back into the screen on the fastball and a one ball, two strike count. I thought Dave Tremblay's characterization of Hernandez comparing him to Vic, uh, Carlos Zambrano was very accurate. Big strapping guys, very animated, good athletic skills. They have the ability to field. Zambrano, he might be the best hitting pitcher in all of baseball. One ball, two strike count. There aren't any liquid refreshment machines in the dugout for Seattle, other. <laughs> One minor incident where he One. abused a Gatorade dispenser, and everybody remembers that. <laughs> That's Zambrano with the Cubs, who did just that. And the players all put band-aids on it, put signs up, we're going to miss you. <laughs> two ball, two strike count. And a towering rainmaker pop-up at second base, shortstop, Betancourt. And he's got it, and Scott is retired, one away. The Cal Ripken All-Stars hosting the Valley Baseball League All-Stars, the Mid-Atlantic Classic, July 15, Regency Furniture Stadium in Waldorf. If you can't be there, all the action will be brought to you live on Mass and HD. 7.05 game time, home run derby 5.30. It is free. Donations would be appreciated. You can get all kinds of the info, things that you need to know at Ripken Senior College Baseball.org. That's coming up on July 15. Here is Nolan Reimold who grounded out his first time up. Reimold hitting at 291. I spoke to Terry Crowley about Reimold and his approach and how Crowley has watched him grow and handle major league pitchers. And what he called him was a good young major league hitter. Pretty interesting praise coming from Terry Crowley and he really breaks down his hitters. And he thinks he loves the way that Reimold lets the ball travel before he commits. He can stay back on the ball and still drive it. Yeah, and his second at bat last night was probably the most impressive off Brandon Morrow. He got a first pitch fastball out over the plate with a runner in scoring position and drove it sharply into right field. 1 0 count, runner at first base and one down. Rymold now with seven homers, 16 RBIs. And those seven home runs, the second quickest to that number. In Oriole history for a player in his first 23 career games. Kurt Belfry, the only player ahead of him with eight in the first 23 games. Then you got Murray, Jim Traber, Don Baylor in Orioles history with homers to start their careers. Taylor Bay double play. Betancourt will go to the back one over the first double play, and that's that. No runs, one hit, no errors, and nobody left on base. Hernandez dominating the Oriole hitters right now at 2 nothing Mariners lead.
is brought to you by Southwest Airlines. Book your next trip at southwest.com. With Buck Martinez and Amber Theo Harris and a couple of rocking kids. I'm Gary Thorne. Good ball game again and another close game. A 2-0 lead, 2-3-0 for the Mariners. 0-3-1 for the O's. An honor and run on the board, the 28th. Honor and run the Orioles have surrendered this season. They have been at the top of the pack in the American League. Those errors have cost them runs. Guthrie has walked none, struck out one. He goes against Jamie Burke, the catcher, who flied out his first time up. Seattle has more games decided by two runs or less than any club in baseball. 35 decisions in games decided by two runs or less. That reflects the impact of their pitching and also the fact that they struggle offensively. They don't score many runs. Yep. Jamie Burke, a veteran. How about a guy who's had 17 professional years and his major league service time is three years? 2 1 delivery on the way. That'll be popped up first base. Huff over. And no room. Burke's one of those guys who take that Hank Snow song, I've been everywhere, man. Started out in Boise, 1993. Cedar Rapids, Lake Elsnore, Midland, Vancouver. Edmonton, Salt Lake, Anaheim, Charlotte, Chicago, back to Charlotte, Oklahoma, and Seattle. 2 2 delivery on the way, and that is taken inside. And a three ball, two strike out. Kenji Jojima out, not expected back. A couple of weeks playing time, probably. He's going to get some time, and he's going to get a base hit. So Burke is on with a single leading off the fifth inning. And let's take a look forward to tomorrow. The pitching matchup brought to you by M&T Bank. Understanding what's important. Now, former Oriole Garrett Olson will make his fourth start of the season against Koji Uehara, who's returning off the disabled list. Uehara had that hamstring problem, and uh, the Japanese media has been anticipating anticipating this start in the matchup against Ichiro for quite a while. They did not play an awful lot against each other in Japan. A lot of the Japanese media coming on board today for this game in anticipation of tomorrow. And as we said, there'll have to be a roster move tomorrow in order to get Koji O'Hara back into playing status. And that will be done after this game. 1 0 count, runner at first base, slow chopper down to third, and just foul. Home plate umpire Jim Wolf making the call. First at bat in the game. Valentin came on. Hitting in the place of Gutierrez who fouled the ball off his knee in the third inning. He finished his at bat but he could not. Come back out to play as he really drove a ball. Flush into his kneecap. So he's out of the ball game. Little breeze picking up now where there had been none before. And some unholy clouds overhead. One ball, one strike count inside. Guthrie backs him off, and the count goes to two and one. Yeah, Jeremy Guthrie has been a little more effective busting hitters inside. He started off the night doing that to Ichiro. Got him out in that first inning with a 4 3 ground out. Oh, that one's right on the foot. Might have been a little closer right there than Burke wanted that to be. He was just kind of meandering back to the bag. One, it was close, and two, it was close to getting away. So Aubrey Huff had to go down and take that right off the shoelaces. Runners going, hit and run is on center field. Jones has got it. He wants to go to first for a double play and hits the runner. Otherwise, might have had it. Burke was not sure where that ball was, and Jones had a chance to double him up. Well, he sure did. The infielders did a good job of decoying. Burke, look at Brian Roberts covering the bag as if there's going to be a play. And by the time he picks up on the fact that it's in center field, it's a foot race. And fortunately for Jamie Burke, this throw hits him as he's sliding back into the bag. He caught him on that back foot. Ball coming from Jones. You can see it hit that back foot as he was sliding into the bag. Otherwise, that would have been close. Had it been to the right field side of first base, he'd probably been out. Now here's Ichiro with one down and a runner at first base. He has doubled one for two in the ball game. Ichiro is now six for 19 lifetime off Guthrie. Ichiro has been tearing it up on the road. 
is 404 batting average. That's right, 404 batting average on the road is the best in the league. Pitch is taken down low for a ball. And a 2 0 count. So each row gets the count where he wants it. Burke, after checking with the third base coach, gets his lead, and he does bunt, looking for a base hit. Weeders, nice play, perfect throw to get the lead runner. Jamie Burke, not fast, a foot. The well, Weeders had time to get him. Well, we haven't seen Matt Weeders throw that often, but boy, did he throw a strike to second base, recognizing he's got to play on the catcher and gets the lead runner. Look at this throw. Right in the chest of Robert Andino, waiting for it. Bad bunt right out in front, doesn't get on the grass, and Weeders makes an easy play of it. Ichiro bunting for a base hit attempt there, doesn't get it. Weeders the play, Ichiro's on, two down. Russell Bryan is grounded out and struck out. Two away, fifth inning, two nothing Mariners lead, throw over again. Guthrie's throws almost every time at first have been very close to bouncing in the dirt. Aubrey Huffs had to go down to scoop those up at first base. That time a good throw. Each row getting into the back side of the bag. Well, that's where you want to throw ideally is in that top corner of the bag. You can see where each row's foot is right there. Just right over the top of that about 10 inches high is perfect. Runner not going. Pitch taken up high by Brannion. 317 average right now. He's had one hit four at bats against Guthrie. The one hit a home run. Each row nine stolen bases and 13 chances on it first, but he's not going to take the bat out of the hands of Brandon. The big shift is on, so the shortstop and Dino will be covering the bag. He's almost playing on the bag in the shift. Big cut by Brandon, and the count will go to two and one. When Ichiro Suzuki first came to the Mariners in 2001, he had 56 steals. He's not had over 50 steals since that first season. 2 1 delivery to Brannion. A fastball up high. Brannion may be hitting in the two spot, but all his movements are those of a number three, four, five hitter. Yeah. And he really looks to his first move with the bat is pull it back. He's got an uppercut. He really he swings hard. He's got power. 13 home runs. And a slow chopper. That's Andino, the shortstop, who makes the play. Well, the shift working there. No runs, one hit, no errors, and one left. Thunder bumpers around the area. Orioles would like to get some of that. They trail 2 0. And one for the O's, but obviously a game very much within reach, and another tough ball game. Just a good, solid pitching performance on both sides of it. Yeah, you know what? And everybody talks about the Orioles slumping a little bit, but they've really run into some pretty good pitchers over the last couple of series. When you look back to the Seattle series out west, and then the Oakland series down in California, they were pretty tough pitches they had to deal with. But Dave Trimley made a great point when we talked to him a little earlier in the game when he said, "You got to get the Felix Hernandez early because he's one of those thoroughbreds that will get it sorted out." They had a good chance. 
chance in the first inning, but he stranded those base runners early on. It is often said the pitchers who use the sinker who like to get down low. As they tire a little bit, the ball tends to sink a little better. They don't have so much zip on it, and it actually is better for them. He seems to be one of those. Yeah, he sure is. And what happens is that it, you don't overpower the break. What you do is you back off it a little bit, and you allow the ball to break when you're not throwing quite as hard. Sometimes you can muscle the ball right through the break, and you won't get that ball to sink. It stays up in the zone just like that one there. That one's going to go into the corner. HRO will give chase on his way to second base trying for the double and it'll be a stand up variety. A two bagger to lead it off here and Matt Wieters gets his second double of the season. Hey guess what Matt Wieters is starting to hit. He sure is. Look at the extension here as he gets that ball out in front. Boy, that's a beautiful swing. High finish as he takes the top hand off the bat and he drives it all the way to the base of the wall in right field. Ichiro's got to dig it out as it bounces up against that little gutter underneath the scoreboard and Wieters has his second double. Lead off double and Seattle's going to play bunt. In at first and third against Andino, and he's not butting and fouls it off. Andino flied out to left his first time up as the Orioles get their fourth hit, each team with four hits in the ballgame now. The defense looking over into the dugout to see how they want to play this. They're still going to stay in a bit at first and third. Lee Tinsley, the first base coach, handles the alignment in the infield. Here's the 0-1 delivery. And Dino takes the fastball inside again, showing nothing approaching bunt there. Waiters on at second base, and they'll back him up a little bit at first and third. Well, Wacom out to the manager of the Mariners knows that the Orioles are struggling to score runs. You don't want to give him any easy runs here by conceding a potential bunt to give Andino the chance to put Waiters over at third. 1-1 delivery to him. Andino fouls it back. One ball, two strike count. So what Hernandez was looking for right here is the strikeout, obviously. And he's got plenty of weapons for that. He's got the slider. He's got a very good curveball. He's got a sinking fastball, and he can elevate the fastball as well. And Dino coming into the ball game has only three walks and 15 strikeouts. And looking at a pitcher who is fifth in strikeouts in the league with 81. One ball, two strikeout. The delivery and Dino thought about it. Didn't go. Two and two. 94 miles an hour, but what happened to Hernandez there? He tried to reach back for a little extra and missed all the way across the plate and off the plate to the opposite side. Orioles trailing by a score of two nothing. Fifth inning. Felix Hernandez with Weeders at second. Delivers two two. That'll be chopped foul at the plate right straight down. It'll stay at a two ball two strike count. Weeders back to the bag. Well you can see what they're doing is they're really keeping the ball inside to Andino. If he does hit it chances are he's going to hit it on the left side of the infield and that'll keep Matt Weeders from moving up to third. What Andino wants to do is drive it on the right side. Put it in play. Not trying to hold Weeders very close at all. So he's able to get a pretty good jump there. 2 2 delivery. And Dino, that's the one he wanted. And fouls it straight back 2 and 2. Now, Robert's having a pretty good approach. He's staying inside the ball, trying to hit it to the right side. He's conscious of what he needs to do here. That's at a minimum. Obviously, he'll take a base hit. Dave Tremblay would love to see a base hit here. But he wants to see Matt Wieters move up at least 90 feet if Andina should make an out. Two for six with runners in scoring position. Little bolt of lightning and thunder there, ooing and eyeing the crowd. 2 2 delivery, reach for it. Wieters is not going. Play will be at first base. So Andino does not get the runner moved up. And there's one away here in the fifth. And on Friday, one of the most popular Oriole Park promotions is going to be back. It'll be sponsored by Miller Lite. It is the Orioles' floppy hat. The first 25,000 fans, 21 and over, are going to get one. This year's hat features the new Oriole Bird logo on one side and the O's cap logo on the other. Great collectible and great fun to use. 888-848-BIRD or Orioles.com. Brian Roberts now with the runner at second weeders. One down. Roberts has struck out and doubled. That ball up the middle is going to be a base hit and a great break. Weeders is going to be waved home. 
Ende Chavez up, no play at the plate. RBI single by Roberts, and it's a two to one game. Well, that picks up Robert Andino. He'll be grateful for that Brian Roberts base hit as Matt Waiters comes in after the leadoff double. The lead is cut in half, just a one hopper over the mound, past Betancourt into center field. Chavez has a long run, and he wisely elects not to make a throw as Waiters comes in. Again, look at the balance. No stride whatsoever. Roberts just using his hands. His head stays down. He drives it right back over the mound. So the Orioles make it a one-run ball game. 23rd RBI for Roberts. Only the second time Weeders has crossed the plate with a run for the Orioles. And now here's Adam Jones who has walked and grounded out with a runner at first base. And Brian Roberts back to the bag. Roberts two for three in the ball game. Now the shutout is gone. And now the Orioles want to do a little more here in the fifth with the thump of the order coming up. Marquecas waiting on deck. Throw over again. Brian Roberts back to the back. We were comparing uh, Ichiro and uh, Adam Jones earlier. Ichiro leading the league in hitting. Jones is fourth in multi hit games. They are tied. Both have 25 multi hit games coming into this one. Tied for first in the American League. Roberts not extending his lead. Timeout was called somewhere. Apparently at the plate or something. Brian Roberts at first base put his hands up in the air as though he recognized the timeout before anybody else did. Play ball. One down. Jones will foul that one off. Strike one. Roy Adam has gotten a steady diet of inside fastballs, and most of them have been down, about knee high and lower, and there have been strikes, tough pitches to lay off of. But he has seen more than his fair share of sinkers down and in. Coming over from Seattle, of course, 14th game he's played against his former organization. Fouls it away. He's hitting 327 against Seattle, as was true last night. George Sherrill, another one coming over from Seattle, came on and picked up the save. And these two teams have played each other so often here, six times in 11 days, as the Orioles faced them on a road trip. And the Orioles will be going back out there next month. Jones with an 0 2 count. Foul that one off. Right off the catcher. Another one of those right in on the top hand. 0 2. Yeah, then they just keep pouring that fastball in on his hands, and Dave Tremblay knows the league understands what a good hitter Adam Jones has become. And they're making constant adjustments trying to figure out how to get him out. And he's got to counteract those adjustments. Here's this last pitch, and it's a good moving fastball. Look at the movement, take it right inside. Boy, he just barely got a piece of it. Got the top half of that baseball. Still a two strike count. Roberts has made no move to run and is not. That'll be taken down low. Another area where Ichiro and Adam are one and two is versus right handed pitching. Right now, Ichiro leads the league with a 376 average. Right behind him, Adam Jones at 364. It's amazing how close they are in so many categories. Uh, and the surprising thing for Adam is that he is a righty hitting against righties. And because most right handers throw breaking balls away and fastballs away, he stays very strong on the outer three quarters of the plate. And there are the numbers against right handed pitching. Here's the one two delivery. Jones will take it and he's gone. Hernandez gets his third strikeout as Jones goes down looking. And there are two down. Take a look at the pitch track. One two fastball might have sank right out of the strike zone. There's a lot of sinking action on that pitch. Jamie Burke did a nice job of catching it. Didn't really get handcuffed, but it looked like it may have been low. So Nick Marcakis, who has walked and flied out, will stand in. There are two down. Runner on at first base, Brian Roberts. 
Marikakis files it back. Let's take a look at our leaderboard. It's presented by Firestone, a tradition of innovation. The highest home team batting average, Orioles at 299. There are the Red Sox who enjoy Fenway. Texas, a good hitting ballpark. Minnesota, the dome. And now it looks like the pitcher might have some physical problems as the trainer and the manager have come out. That's Rick Griffin, longtime trainer for the Seattle Mariners. He got a smile on his face. He looked like he may have lost his balance after the last pitch. You can see that landing foot kind of gave way. Gets up gingerly, walks around, regroups, and certainly that'll make your heart sink to your stomach if you're in the manager's seat in the dugout. More embarrassed than hurt? Probably so. He's kind of kicking around that right leg a little bit like he might have twisted something, but he's strong as an ox and just 23 years old. Oh, one count. Nick Marikakis, Roberts will wait. Hernandez right there probably just wanted to throw a throw to somebody. Except Marquegas, just see how it was going to feel. So he just tossed one over to first base to Russell Brannion. There's the 0 1 delivery, and Marquegas will take it, and it is a strike call. Nick didn't think so and walks away, and the count goes to two strikes. Well, it looked like it might have been up a bit. 0 oh, 2 count. A little what four coming from the dugout as Wolf was looking over there. Home plate umpire. Been a couple of calls, close pitches that he's gone pitcher wise. 0 oh, 2 on Marquegas. Roberts at first, not a big lead. That one hit down the line, fair ball right off the chalk. Ichiro in the corner. Roberts coming to third. He'll be stopped as the relay throw comes all the way to, wasn't any, came all the way to the plate from Ichiro, who was about 300 feet away. A double for Nick Marquegas. Well, you talk about awareness from a ball player, Ichiro. Goes down the line. Take a look at this shot by Nick Marcakis. Great extension. Drives it. Russell Brandon just bounced off the line and it can't get back in time. Look at the umpire, Brian Onora, standing right on the line. It hits the chalk line. Here comes Brian Robertson. Ichiro knows he's got a chance to score, and Ichiro airmails it all the way to the plate on the fly. So here is Aubrey Huff. Huff looking for the big two out hit. The Orioles had two on, first two in the first inning. Got him over to second and third, could not score. Aubrey Huff had a chance to get him in and was robbed of a hit in an RBI by Brannion. Now he's got another chance. 1 0 delivery. Aubrey Huff takes that one into right field, right at him. Ichiro is there, and that's that. And again, Hernandez works out of the problem. The Orioles will get a run on three hits, leaving two on. It's a 2 to 1 Mariners lead.
tomorrow we'll be covering the bases with a man who just loved to have that bat in his hand. That's Matt Weeders. We'll take a look at Matt. We'll have a chance to uh, talk with him, talk to his college coach, talk about uh, baseball, talk about the family. It's all coming up. We hope you'll visit homedepot.com slash spring. More saving, more doing the power of Home Depot covering the bases tomorrow. Tonight, it's a two to one ball game and a well pitch game. Got three no walks, one strikeouts. Felix Hernandez, two walks, three strikeouts. The Mariners, two, four, and oh, and the Orioles, one, six, and one. And it's slightly misty. The pitch is taken outside and a 2 0 count on Beltre. Beltre reached on an error, scored in the fourth. That on earned run right now is the difference in the game. He also is grounded out. He's going to get a base hit there. Just lifts that one. Rymo is going to try and hold him to a single. He makes the turn, going to go for two. Here's the throw, and he's got the double. That's the value of getting the count in your favor. Two balls and no strikes. You can expand your zone, be a little more aggressive. That wasn't a bad pitch. Outside fastball, probably on the corner. He drills it to the power alley and left. Rymo's throw, not in time. Lead off double. What a powerful swing, knowing he's got the count in his favor and a little bit of leeway. Turns the first base sack and looks at the throw and hustles into second. Big double. He's got 14. Almost lost contact with the bag. Roberts was hoping. Foul straight back. Ken Griffey Jr. He has flied out and popped out in the ball game. The shift is on. His job here to get that runner moved up. Melvin Mora has to stay close enough to third so that Beltre can't take off and steal it. One ball, one strike count. Griffey ending at 2 11, six homers, 16 RBIs. He will back off. We are in the sixth inning of a tight ball game. All these pitchers matter now. And he takes a towering fly ball to right field. Lining up to make a throw to third, Marquegas. Beltre tags. Here's the throw, and it'll be not in time. Well, Beltre. Good heads up work on the base pass through all of this. He gets himself over to third base with one away. Yeah, he hustled on the leadoff double, and then he tags, has his eye on Marquez, times his break on the catch, and hustles over to third base. The ball hit deep enough for him to advance, and now that'll force the Orioles to play the infield in on the edge of the grass. And uh, here is Jose Lopez, who has a single and a home run, two for two in this ball game. Now six for 17, lifetime off Guthrie. And a chance to get another RBI. 0 1 delivery to him deep to left field. Rymo going back, and goodbye, home run. He's done it again. A uh, two RBI homer. His second home run of the ball game. And the Mariners take a 4 1 lead. This looks like another slider. And Lopez has been on everything he has seen tonight. Up top of the strike zone. Trying to go down and away. And it's another pitch that spins up out over the plate. And Lopez took care of it. A very big hit. To make it four to one. Two home runs off Guthrie tonight, both hit by Lopez. And the 1 0 delivery. That'll be taken for a strike on the outside corner by Bettencourt. He's 0 for 2. He does have an RBI on a ground ball out. Lopez has now had six career home runs against the Orioles. And uh, 25 career RBIs against him. And Guthrie's moved into first place in home run surrender. That will be taken down low. Did he go? No. First base umpire Brian O'Nora says he held up three and one. Ben Clark clearly checked his swing and then dribbles this one to the shortstop. And Dino will make the play for the second out. 
Betancourt is retired, and there are two down. You just got to wonder about Jeremy and those sliders. It seems as though every time he throws one, it just kind of spins up out over the plate. And Rick Granitz was talking about his curveball. It's a different pitch. It's a little bit slower. It's a little bigger break and a deeper break to change the plane of the hitter's eyesight. That's Danny Baez loosening up down in the Orioles' bullpen. Two down, nobody on. Andy Chavez, he has grounded out twice in the game. And that pitch will be taken inside. It's only the second multi homer game of the season for the Mariners. Ichiro has the other one. And it'll be fouled away. And they aren't new for Jeremy Guthrie. Was, I mean, last year, the home run ball, the runs he gave up, a lot of them were off, were off the homers. It's just part of the, what happens with Guthrie. We talk about uh, hitters are what they are when the season ends. Same is obviously often true for pitchers. Did he go? Yes. Gary Sears from down to third, making the call. Chavez is a strikeout victim, but the big blow, Lopez, a two RBI homer, is second of the game, eighth of the season. A good week for Jake Arietta down in Double A Bowie. He was uh, select, or he was honored by being named the Eastern League Player of the Week. He has a 2-0 record in the past week, with two giving up just two runs, 14 strikeouts, and 13 and two-thirds innings pitch. Also, want to mention that six Frederick Keys were named to the All-Star Game this year. You can see the list of them there: Zach Brighton, Pedro Florman, Caleb Joseph, Luis LeBron, of course, Brian Mattis on there, and Brandon Waring. So nice to see. See that many Frederick Keys going to the All Star game. Gary? That'll be Frederick against everybody else. What a nice play made by Betancourt again. He gets the out on Melvin Mora and one away here in the sixth. Amber? And Gary, I was told that there's a cute little boy behind me here in the shot. That is uh, Kwaeze Nfumi, the third, of course, the former leader of the NAACP. Kwaeze Nfumi sitting right behind me. So I just want to give a little shout out to the cute little boy behind me. Absolutely. <laughs> and having a good time. He's enjoying the game. And wide awake. Not past my bedtime yet. One down here in the bottom half of the sixth inning. Hernandez gets a very quick out. Luke Scott is struck out, popped out. The Orioles have not scored more than three runs in a game against Seattle this year. In the four games that have been played, these two teams have split. They have all been close games, and they've all been low scoring ball games. Oh, one delivery. That is taken down low, one and one to Scott. And the problem with dealing against Hernandez, although they have hit him well in the past, he is one of those guys that gets better later in the game with the lead. Kind of an old throwback pitcher. 1-1. One, one. Scott over the top of that. And a one ball, two strike count. He's just dealing now. He's throwing strikes. Yeah. And Don Wakamatsu, a couple starts ago against the Angels, 
Very kind of mixed approach by Hernandez. Five and two-thirds, 11 hits, six earned runs, three walks. Just a very nondescript kind of start. And Wakamatsu challenged Hernandez, said, your stuff is way too good to be like that. And boy, since then, he has been lights out. His next start against the Giants went eight innings. Scattered seven hits, allowed just one earned run. And backed it up another start against the Angels. 2-2 two -two delivery. Scott will fight that one away. It'll stay at 2-2. Two and two. As we mentioned, you got a 23-year-old on the mound whose record is already 44 and 39 in his major league career. It's going to be pretty good when he grows up. Yeah, he'll be <laughs> learning the game here pretty soon. He signed when he was 16 back in July of 02 out of Venezuela. Two ball, two strike count, and Scott asked for the timeout at the plate. Rymold waiting on deck. That home run by Lopez in the six changes the complexion of the ball game a ton. Swung on and missed. Four strikeouts for Hernandez. Two down. Yeah, we hope you'll get online and uh, vote. Adam Jones, Nick Marquez, Cesar Torres, all in the running for a position on the All-Star team. You can vote orange, save green by voting for the Birds. 25 times you get a free upper reserve seat. Any non-prime game after the break. So we hope you'll visit and vote. And we'll be fouled back. Just go to Orioles.com slash vote orange to cast your All-Star ballot. Hmm. What a surprise. It's not going to rain. It's raining. No, no, no. No, no. It's not raining now. It wasn't raining before, and it's not going to rain later. Nolan Reimold, 0 for 2 in the ball game. Right back to the mound. Hernandez dominating. A 1-2-3 inning. We've completed six now at Camden Yards. Game two of the three-game set, and the Mariners have a three-run lead. Game in the second inning with one out. Jose Lopez goes deep. A solo home run to seventh of the season. Then he backs it up in the sixth inning with a two run shot. Brian Roberts gets an RBI single. That drives home Matt Leaders, who hit single to start the fifth inning. Jeremy Guthrie going six innings, allowing three runs. Two home runs allowed. Jose Lopez, both home runs, and he added a single for good measure. Brian Roberts, Matt Weeders have both a single and a double each as they have really been swinging the bats well against Felix Hernandez. And now Danny Baez comes out of the bullpen to work the top of the seventh here. Baez with a four and one record in the 19 games he has appeared in. 29 innings, 18 hits. Opponents hitting only 173 off him. 21 strikeouts. He has walked 13. And Baez will go to work here in the seventh inning. Leading it off. De Chavez, uh, Jamie Burke rather. Burke has singled. And flied out. And the pitch is taken for a strike. 
So Burke up. And Baez's job here to hold him down, give the O's a chance with the remaining at bats to get back into the game. Pitch is taken away. Baez worked a scoreless inning on Saturday in Oakland. First appearance he had on the road trip. He's worked as many as three innings a couple of times this season out of the bullpen. 2 1 delivery. The fastball is there for a strike, 2 and 2. Danny is throwing the ball very well. Oftentimes, when he'll come into a ball game early in the inning, he'll have command problems, but that's just because he is throwing so hard with so much movement. 2 2. Burt grounds it to Roberts. Brian up makes the play, one away. This copyrighted telecast presented by authority of the Orioles may not be reproduced or retransmitted in any form and the accounts and descriptions of this game may not be disseminated without the express written consent of the Orioles. Here in Birdland a good one. Twelve thousand seven hundred seventy the announced attendance. One down and Baez gets the strike. Valentin up getting his second at bat. Flyed out his first time up. Vladimir Valentin will follow it into the screen. Strike two. Valentin came on for the injured Franklin Gutierrez back in the third inning. Gutierrez fouled the ball off his left kneecap first at bat of the night, came in the top of the third inning. Mariners are threatening to win for the first time in uh, the last six games against the Orioles here. At Camden Yards, the Orioles have a five game win streak against Seattle in this ballpark. 1 2 delivery on the way and got him on the outside corner. Baez gets the strikeout, two down. Uh, Ballantine's going to pack his lumber back to the dugout, but he didn't really think that that ball was a strike. So, low strike if indeed it did catch the strike zone, but a lot of late movement. Jim Wolf gives Baez the call, second out of the inning. Fastball right at the bottom of the strike zone, and Valentin didn't agree on. Two down. Here's Ichiro. He takes the strike. Ichiro has doubled. One for three. Four game hit streak. Tried to bunt his way on last time. League's leading average at 359. That one in the kitchen and got him. Not sure Ichiro was going to go on his own. But the home plate umpire Jim Wolf immediately said, "Nope, that gets you," and he heads down. Take a look at—he gets that leg up, and it's very difficult to move. It never touched him. Went right between his legs, and that's why he wasn't going to go anywhere. Good reason. And Dave Tremblay is arguing. Tremblay wants some help from somebody else out there because he knew by the reaction of each row. Yeah, watch this. He gets the foot down and it goes right between his legs without touching a thing. Tell you what, if he'd been hit by that pitch down in the ankles, he'd have made some kind of reaction and it wouldn't have been dancing around in the dirt. <laughs> yeah. Here's Branyan down to first base. Aubrey Huff pitcher covers. Myers gets there and that'll do it. No runs, no hits, no errors. One left on base. Seventh inning stretch time at Camden Yards. It's brought to you by Jack Daniels Tennessee Whiskey. Please drink responsibly.
rapid rewind. Well, Matt Waiters looking very comfortable at the plate and behind the plate. Another two hit night for him tonight. He singled and made a fine defensive play on a bunt off the bat of Ichiro to throw out the lead runner and then gets his second hit of the night a double out into the right field corner in a fifth he would score. AT&T the nation's fastest 3G network AT&T your world delivered. And it'll be Matt Waiters leading it off here with the double and a single and a run scored. Waiters will try and get it started here in the bottom half of the seventh inning. 4 6 and 0 oh for Seattle. While the Orioles have been able to pick up just one run on Felix Hernandez. The right handers walked two and struck out four in the ball game, looking for his sixth win against three losses. Coming in with the 10th best ERA in the league at 3.22. And he has not hurt that so far in this game. Weider stands in and the pitch is away for a ball. Well, I got to tell you, Matt Weeders is starting to come around at the plate, but behind the plate, he looks like he's been here for 10 years. I mean, you don't even notice his presence back there. And that's a good thing. Catchers, when they normally come up from the minor leagues, it takes a while. I can speak from experience because you get overmatched with the quality pitching that you're dealing with every night. You drop balls, you have a tendency to let balls skip by. We have not seen any of that from Matt Weavers. 1 1 delivery. Credit that to the organization and the decision made that these players should move together. Well, I think one of the reasons for that is Matt Weavers has caught some of the youngsters who have come up and are on the mound, so he knows who they are, he knows how they throw. He's familiar with three or four to some degree, three with extensive experience. Birkin and Bergeson, I mean they they've pitched to him before. Swung on and missed. Boy, Hernandez right now is almost untouchable. Fifth strikeout. Well, and now they've incorporated the curveball into the mix. Early on it was sinker slider and watch the break on this curveball. A lot deeper break, and you can see how it breaks down and in to Matt Waiters and swings over the top of it. There were a couple of good breaking balls in that at bat. Not much of a chance there is. Hernandez is locked in retired five straight now. And Dino. Grounded out flight out 0 for 2 in the ball game, batting ninth, hitting at 241. Felix Hernandez in his 13th start. Orioles had a chance to get to him in the first inning and didn't. Swung out and missed. Roberts had a double and Jones had a walk and the Orioles did not score. Part of that on a very fine defensive play by Russell Brannion. That kind of defined the game, and Hernandez then settled in. Here's the 0 2 delivery. And Dino with a chopper. Betancourt running throw, and he's got him, and there are two down. Two away in the seventh on Saturday. The first 10,000 fans, 15 and over, will receive the Orioles' crab mallet set presented by Old Bay. Combining two of the Birdland favorite traditions in the summer, those steam crabs and Orioles baseball. Tickets start as low as $9. To get yours, call the Orioles, 888-848-BIRD, or go to Orioles.com. Man dressed for any kind of weather. And any kind of weather is about what we had. There's still thunder and lightning around the area, but the very light rain has stayed just that. And really is all but stopped at the moment. 1 0 count. Robert single double. RBI he has also struck out. Brian at 284 now. He's got another base hit. Takes that one into left field. A three hit ball game for Roberts, keeping the inning alive. I was talking to Brian Roberts and Nick Marquez is around the cage tonight and talking about the emotional roller coaster hitters can go through if they allow themselves to ride it. Brian had a terrible start to the month of May. His first 11 games hit 133. Nick Marquez has hit 240 over the last month. But as Dave Tremblay told us yesterday, those hitters will be where they should be at the end of the year. Going to have some good months, some awful months, and some that don't really figure but at the same time you're going to get four maybe five at bats a night. Brian Roberts getting the bats at bats and hits out of them. Now Adam Jones Jones has had a walk he has struck out and grounded out in the ball game. Roberts on at first base and two down. Brian Roberts his sixth three hit game of the season. And the Orioles trying to take advantage of it with two away. 
1 0 delivery to Jones. That'll be a foul ball. Felix Hernandez has battled through the couple of times in the game where he's needed to. Talked about that first inning and again in the fifth. And the Orioles would leave two in scoring position as they did in the first inning. Those are the only two innings, though, where he's really gotten into any kind of trouble. One ball, one strike count. Jones inside just missed two and one. Well, it takes an awful lot of discipline to lay off those pitches because Adams been getting so many of those pitches lately. Your first thought is I'm going to open up and hit one of these because they're wearing me out inside. But if you do that you're playing right into the pitcher's hand. Then the outside corner becomes a bigger target for him as well. 2 1 delivery on the way went outside hard slider and a two ball two strike count. Hernandez seemingly throwing almost as hard right now as he was in the first inning. Well, he's certainly throwing a much better quality pitch lately with all of his pitches the fastball the slider and the curveball. So an even count here two and two Roberts off first. He'll be going on contact with two down and down to third another jam shot Beltre up makes the throw and gets the out. No runs one hit no errors one left on base Hernandez continues to get the outs he needs 4 one Seattle. Top of the eighth, Amber Theo Harris with Rockabaco from MassinSports.com. Check out his blog, School of Rock. And on the blog today, is there a lot of discussion about the bullpen? We do know some updates. So Chris Ray, how is he doing down in AAA Norfolk? Yeah, we know the numbers: five and two-third innings over four appearances, no runs, only one hit, six strikeouts. But what's more important are the reports that their pitching coach down there, Mike Griffin, is sending manager Dave Trembley. Apparently, Ray's velocity is up to 93, 94 of this fastball. Uh, you know, good command. His deliveries. A lot better than it was before, and also his tempo was slowed down, which is really important. When he was here, he was throwing like his hair was on fire. Even when he was in the bullpen warming up, they needed him to slow it down because it affects his slider. And right now, the slider's a lot sharper. That's the tempo they want from him, and he's being used the way they couldn't use him here, late in close games. They had to have him sit for a week and put him in a blowout. He knew that wasn't doing him any good. So it's great that he's dominating down there, but he's supposed to be doing that triple A. What's more important is how he's getting the outs. All right, we'll see if he works his way back up here. Dennis Sarfate, we haven't heard about him in a while. Yeah, he's on a program where he's throwing every other day on flat ground. The plan right now is for him to throw off a mound starting on June 25th. If all goes well, he'll make his first rehab appearance in the minors on July 4th. He wanted to start pitching weeks ago. They practically have to sit on him because he's such a competitor. They're trying not to rush him. He feels great. Uh, but they're going to go ahead and keep taking it slow with him. But everything right now so far is so good with Dennis Sarfate. 
we do know that there will be some movement in the bullpen when those two are ready to come back or when Chris Ray works his way back up. But tomorrow we could see movement in the bullpen. Tell me about some of the moves you could see here in the future. Yeah, we're speculating, and this has not been confirmed at all, but we're assuming that David Hernandez would go down to make room for Koji Uehara tomorrow. But the club says they're still deciding that. But I know they want him to be a starter. You figure it makes sense to keep him on a starter schedule, pitch every five days in AAA. Beyond that, though, when Chris Ray's ready, you figure how are you going to make room for him? There aren't a lot of moves you can make right now. Brian Bass is pitching great. He's out of options, but they're not going to want to send him down anyway. Maybe that's trouble for Mark Hendrickson. We don't know. As for Sarfate, he's not going to come back to work close to the non-waiver deadline. So these things have a way of working themselves. Out. Maybe Danny's buy is by then is traded. Maybe George Sherrill is. And so the, a roster spot could open up just kind of naturally for him because that has a way of happening, just like you always kind of keep an open mind when we're on TV together. These things open up. Yeah, I really tend to. I take it with a grain of salt. All right, thanks a lot, Rock. I really appreciate it. Check out his uh, blog, schoolofrock.com. Thank you. Let's go back to you guys, Gary and Buck. All right, Ever, thank you. Brian Roberts had a chance for the lead runner down at second base. Beltre let it off for the second hit a single. But once the bobble occurred, the only play was at first base. Griffey's retired, and a runner at second base went away. Well, now they have to figure out how to get this guy out. Jose Lopez, three for three, couple of home runs, three RBIs on the night. And he has hit just about everything that they have thrown him tonight. Three for three ball games, seven for 19 against the Orioles this season, and a three RBI game. Pitch is taken down low. It is already a 4 1 Seattle lead. Each team has seven hits. Then some big players in this ball game. Beltres had two singles, reached on an error, scored an unearned run. Lopez, two home runs, three RBIs, three hits in the ball game. The hits have been grouped together as the Orioles have Matt Wieters with a couple of hits and a run scored, and Brian Roberts, a three hit ball game and an RBI. One ball, one strike count, one down. Here's Brian, who's picked up two singles and a double tonight. Baez with Beltre on at second base has got good speed. Lopez, 1 1. And fouls that away, no play. He's three for seven, lifetime off Baez. He's faced him, not as much as anybody on the ball club. Yeah, obviously when you play in a different division and you're pitching out of the bullpen, you don't see hitters too often. They might have an at bat during the series, but that's about it. One two delivery to Lopez. Swung over the top of that one and did not get to it. Good job by Baez. He gets his second strikeout two down here in the eighth inning. Time to text in your vote for the AT&T player of the game. Here are the candidates tonight. Hernandez got a chance at a victory as he's pitched a strong game. Lopez, big night at the plate we just told you about. And Brian Roberts with the three hits and four times up. Text in your vote A, B, or C to 51862. Still an important run out there at second base. Yaneski Betancourt, the shortstop. RBI and a ground ball out officially 0 for 3. Valtteri, good lead at second. Grounded to third. Melvin Mora backing up right off the cut of the grass. And will get the out. No runs, one hit, no errors, and one left on base. Baez doing his part. Now the Oriole Bats will try and get back for the 4 1 deficit.
despite the world's most refreshing beer. Second inning, Jose Lopez frees it right on the barrel of the bat, stays inside with the slider, and he knocks it out of the ballpark. Sixth inning with a man aboard trying to go away again. He elevated slider again right on the barrel of the bat. He hits it deep into the seats for his eighth home run. Barrel home runs, three RBIs for Lopez. Hernandez is out of there with a chance to win it, and Sean White will come out of the bullpen. He has not been scored on in his last 14 outings, covering 16 innings, giving up nine hits and no runs over that span. He was called up from Triple A Tacoma early on April 16, and those are the numbers he has put up, and they have been good for the Mariners. Yeah, the Orioles saw Sean White in game two of their three games set out in Seattle last Tuesday. He came in relief in the seventh inning in relief of Eric Bedard. Came on with one out, pitched an inning and two thirds, allowed one hit and nothing else. Now the Orioles will try and get to him here with Nick Marikakis, Huff, and then Mora do up. A double has walked and flied to center field. Marikakis will foul that one away. Wrap up game of this three game set will be coming tomorrow. Koji O'Hara to come off the DL and pitch against the former Oriole, Garrett Olson, who will come in with an 0 1 record. You see the light rain falling again off and on here. 0 1 delivered to Marquegas. He lifts that one to right field right at Ichiro. One down. So White gets the all important first out late in a ball game. Aubrey Huff has gone 0 for 3. Grounds crew doing a little duty in their own area. <laughs> that one down the line deep and foul the other way. Orioles offense is trying to get it going against some very tough pitching. Felix Hernandez, a run on seven hits over seven innings, two walks, five strikeouts. Looking for the win in the ball game. Jeremy Guthrie, the starter for the Orioles, four runs, three earned, six hits over six innings, no walks, two strikeouts. But the two home runs picked up by Lopez, the difference in the game. Right off the end of the bat, Lopez, two down. <laughs> Orioles have announced a series of baseball camps designed for boys and girls ages 7 to 16. The baseball summer camps feature a four day instructional program with player appearances by a current and former Oriole. There are professional instructors, autographs, and photo opportunities, daily lunch, giveaways, and complimentary O's tickets. Go to Orioles.com for info. Click on Fan Forum to register and to find out more. Here, let me relocate your teeth. Thank you. Okay, good. Didn't need that bottom jaw anyway. Here's Melvin Mora. One for three, a single in the ballgame. Fastball inside by White 101. When you think about Felix Hernandez and you question well why are they taking him out here in the eighth inning he's thrown over 112 pitches in each of his last five starts so it's just a matter of not wearing him down and got a strong bullpen it's been rested an opportunity to get them some work so you bring them on in thinking about the big picture white with a one ball two strike count Melvin Mora. Trying to get a two out rally going here. It has been tough for the Oriole bats in this game. Here's the one two delivery. Chance in the first two left in scoring position. Got a run in the fifth chance for more two left in scoring position. Otherwise in the other innings the Orioles have not had a runner to second base. Two two delivery by White. Melvin Moore takes it and see you later. White gets the strikeout. That one on the outside corner has a one two three inning. We've completed eight. Seattle leading it four to one.
by Southwest Airlines. Book your next trip at southwest.com. And by Honda. You can depend on your Honda dealer for great leases and low financing. Gary Thorne, Buck Martinez, Amber Theo Harris. A 4-1 Mariners lead. Mariners trying to set up a rubber match for this three-game set in a season series that is right now at 2-2. And after Baez worked a couple of innings, Matt Albers will come on in the ninth. Baez had two strikeouts and allowed one hit as he worked two good innings. Now Matt Albers will try to do the same to keep this a 4-1 ball game. Chance for his hitters to do something in the ninth. Albers out of the pen to hold him down. And a Chavez will be the first to facing. Albers on for the 17th time. Posing batters hitting 295 against him, an 0 2 record. As he's given up 23 hits and 20 innings. And that pitch is taken down low for a ball by Chavez. Matt Albers was part of that outstanding bullpen performance that came on Sunday after Rich Hill lasted just two thirds of an inning. He worked the sixth and seventh and had two strikeouts. That pitch will be taken away for a ball and a 2 0 count. Orioles counting this game. Ten games in which they have not scored more than four runs in a game. That one has popped up the short, and Dino going back. And he's got it. Orioles against the uh, Detroit Tigers. It was on May 29. They had a 7 to 2 victory. Since then, the Orioles, the most runs they've been able to put up on the board has been four, but not more than that. And in most cases, one or two. And again tonight, the Seattle pitching staff holding him down to a run on seven hits. A couple of opportunities early they couldn't take advantage of. And after that, Felix Hernandez really found the groove and got into it consistently in the middle innings. Burke has had a single, one for three. One-0 -oh delivery. That one ripped foul. And a one ball one strike count on Burke. Burke has not been doing the majority of the catching. Rob Johnson had been doing the catching with Kenji Jojima out with the injury, but Johnson is kind of black and blue a little from games, and so Burke's getting a chance. He caught last night and back into this one. Breaking ball tied him up, but it misses. And a two ball one strike count from Albers. It's a little curious that the Mariners would be carrying three catchers now. Rob Johnson, Jamie Burke, and former Oriole Guillermo Curis. Don't see many American League teams do that at all. Slider on the outside corner for a strike. Two and two. Really ties up your ability to make changes. Pinch hitting wise, of course, less, much less of that in the American League than in the National League. Here's the 2 2 pitch to it. Ground ball, third base. Melvin Moore on the short hop. Burke is retired, and there are two down, top of the ninth inning. Take a look at your voting for the AT&T player of the game, the update. Right now, Roberts on top with a three-hit ball game and an RBI. And then Hernandez, the pitcher, and Lopez, a couple of homers in the game. Text in your vote, A, B, or C, to 51862. Results on O's Extra on the postgame show. Two down. Two down, base is empty. And the slider will miss outside. Vladimir Valentin, who came on for Gutierrez, he had to leave after fouling the ball off his knee. He's had two advances, fly out and struck out. Matt Albers comes inside with some heat, and the count goes to 2 0. Oh. Matt's pitched much better since his return from the minor leagues. He has really. Throwing a lot more consistent, good sinking fastballs, and over his last eight games, he's got a 2.38 ERA. He's been much down better. in the zone, much better, more consistent, pitching with a lot more confidence. You know, he was kind of feeling for the strike zone early in the season. Had a chance to go down and regroup a little bit in AAA, and came back and has held the opponents to a 184 average. 3-0 count, Albers. He'll get that in there for a strike. 
Seattle does it by pitching and really pitching alone. They are dead last in the league in runs and they are number one in ERA. You can't get a much greater discrepancy than that. They pitch, they win, they don't, they lose. 3 1 delivery. Popped up first base, foul territory. Huff. And he's got it. Good job by Albers. Retires the side in order. Orioles, three outs to work with. Bottom of the ninth inning. Scott, Reimold, and Weeders. Orioles can get to the third pitcher to be used in the ball game, David Ardsmuth. Nine for ten in saves. Big power arm. They got some good arms in this bullpen, and they're not afraid to use them. This is an unusual team in the American League in that they only have 11 pitchers. That's hard to fathom in this day and age. Most teams carrying a minimum of 12 and most 13. But Ardsmuth's got a power arm. He's been a guy that's bounced around a bit. Most recently from the Boston Red Sox. He's got a big arm as we mentioned a fastball and a very good slider. Arts was allowed runs in one of the last 18 appearances. He's given up three earned runs in the last 18 innings that he has worked. He's had at least one strikeout in 22 of the 28 times he has towed the slab. Uh, David Artswick comes out. It is a save situation for one ball game. Rain comes down. Luke Scott's going to lead it off. Scott has gone 0 for 3 in the ball game, and this is as hard as it has rained tonight. They obviously, bottom of the ninth inning, they being the umpires, are going to try and play through this. Scott goes after the first pitch and fouls it back. Strike one. Hardsman, there's that good fastball to get ahead. 93. He'll throw a hard slider and a good split. So you better gear it up a bit. He's coming at you. Left handers hitting 213. Right handers 137. He gets 75% of first batters faced. Scott will take it down low. And a one ball, one strike count as the Orioles try and do it here in the bottom of the ninth inning. Brian Roberts, an RBI base hit. As accounted for the only run that came in the fifth inning. 1 1 delivery, grounded to first. Russell Brand into the bag. Scott retired, one away. That was a split finger pitch that Scott was out in front of. He hit off that front foot and just bounced it right at the first baseman, Brandon. Nolan Reimold, an 0 for 3. In the ball game, after a two for three, a homer and two RBIs, and the Orioles win last night in the opener, three to one. Jose Lopez has had the big game at the plate with two home runs, three RBIs, and a three-hit game. A towering fly ball left field. Ballantine comes in, looking up into the raindrops. Two down. So the Orioles down to their final out here in the bottom of the ninth. Matt Weeders. 
Well, Wieters has had a good night, two for three. He had a double single and scored a run, but it has been all about the Mariners pitching. Set by Felix Hernandez, the tone was a very effective one. Seven hits and a single run allowed for Hernandez. Two down, nobody on. Felix Hernandez will go six and three with a win. Jeremy Guthrie would take the loss and be four and six. Guthrie's mark would go to two and three against Seattle. And Felix Hernandez, four and three against the O's, career numbers. All right, Swab with an 0-2 count. Weeders fights it off. Orioles will look back at that first inning. And they just didn't get to Hernandez when the first two got on and they did not score. And credit Russell Brynion's fine defensive play on the Huff ground ball. Here's the 0 2 delivery by Artsma up high, 1 and 2. Yeah, no telling how that changed the complexion of the ball game, obviously. Roberts doubled, Jones walked, Nick Marquez has flied to center, and then Huff hit what looked to be a double down the right field line, and Russell Brandy made a fine play to keep it on the infield and retire Aubrey Huff. Here's the 1 2 to Wheaters, and this ball game's in the books. Artsma comes on and retires the side in order. And it'll be a four to one win for Seattle setting up the rubber match for tomorrow as Koji O'Hara scheduled to come off the DL and take the mound against the former Oriole Garrett Olson. Our coverage on Mass and HD will begin at 630 with those.